This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to use Edmodo, how to sign up as a teacher. So first you'll go to the website and click I am a teacher. Select your title, put your name. I'm just making up a name here. Include your email address and of course a password agree to the terms and sign up. There's no email verification required to get you started but later on you will get an email that you'll have to click on. So here you have the option to add your school or your community that you're working out of which is great. I chose our uh, Whitcomb school just to kind of get things going. If you want to add a profile picture which I suggest um, you can do that. You'll have to forgive the hundreds of pictures I have on my computer. I do photography on the side. So anyways, you find the picture that you like and just you can either click it once and select choose or just double click it and it should load up there for you. You can personalize your URL to, to make it easier to have people find you on Edmodo. I just use my first and well my fake first and last name. Um, you can do that, or you can use your own ideas, maybe your class name or something like that. Here are different communities. Um, you, I think that ESL is under world language or language. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you can play around there. Maybe you're a content teacher, so you can click on your content area. So once you log in, you've got your picture, you've connected to your school you can get a group going and you know? a group is like a class um, so I have when I log in I have six or seven classes that I have going on and uh, it just separates each class so you give a name to your group or your class now you can either select your grade level or maybe you have a range of grade levels so for example I work at the high school so I'm going to do grades 9 through 12 and uh, I was looking for ESL here. I think I clicked um, World Languages or Language Arts, and then there was ESL as the option. That's how it works. Anyways. Now you can click on Advanced Options. I'm actually going to go back there in a minute. But uh, this is what uh, your class will look like. Um, right there, you can see that I have a group code as an invitation to that class. So that's the group code that you would share to get your students uh, to log in. One thing I really like to do um, back at Advanced Options is I like to click the Moderate All Posts and Replies. That just that just gives me the option to view anything before a student posts it. Now, unlike Facebook, the students can't post on each other's pages, but they could post the whole class, so I just like to review that before they do. There's lots of different options here. You can send a notification, a post. Um, you can uh, manage your members there. You can create small groups. And that maybe is a little more advanced. Maybe I'll do another tutorial for that. But back to posts. Okay, so here I'm just showing you how to do a simple note. If I have a website that I want the students to look at, this is where I would do that. Um, I would, you know, say, hey, check out this website, or after you finish your quiz, click on the links below. You can just type in the website, or, of course, you can copy and paste. And right there is where you would put the name of your class, and it's already set up to send to my English language development class. It's as easy as that. It's pretty simple. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to do an alert. This is something that you might want to say, hey, quiz today, uh, quiz tomorrow, don't forget, study. It's just like a, a, a strong notification and they always come up bold and will also be in your notifications on the right side of the screen. Uh, an assignment. Okay, so this is great if you want to have students collaborate or just pass in their work. Um, so Edmodo paper here I'm writing. Um, I'm telling them their assignment. And then I'll select a due date maybe a week 
And if you have any attachments, uh, any pictures, any links, or any files, or any rubrics, you can just attach it right into that, and they will have everything that they need. I'm going to skip quizzes for a second and go right to polls. I like the poll feature. Um, it's just a good way to get some, you know, quick feedback from the students. It's pretty easy to set up. And then again, you just send it to the class that you want. They like taking polls. I don't know what it is, but they like like the instant gratification of sharing their opinion. So on the top right, you see notifications. If a student's passed in any work, you'll see a notification there. So now we're going to go over to the library. I'm going to just show you how to upload documents. Just like you would upload something on Facebook. You click upload, you find the document, the picture, whatever it is that you want to share on this website or that you want to save. Um, I think here I wanted to just um, share a picture of my cute, adorable puppy, Little Miss Panda. Um, so you just hit OK and it'll upload it to your library. Now for the students it's called their, um, their backpack. So for teachers it's called a library. And for students, it's called a backpack. Um, you can create folders so that you can organize all of your work. So you just click New, give the folder name. Maybe you want to do pictures. So now we're going over to... I'm just sending a picture. So if I want to share a picture with my students, I can do that that way and connect it from the library instead of uploading new documents. All right, so here's the quiz feature. I really like this feature. It's not just for quizzes, but I do it for assignments, um, getting their feedback, journal entries. Um, you can give it a time limit. So if it's a block period, maybe you want to change that to 90 minutes. And there's lots of different um, types of questions that you can do. And the students like it because they get the instant gratification of getting back your response. Um, so here we did a true or false. My puppy is cute. You can select, uh, you can attach a picture or not. Um, you can just do any type of true or false. Here's a multiple choice question. I really like this one too. Um, it's great. Uh, I know in my biology class, I'll do uh, a lot of multiple choice questions because that's what's on the MCAS. So I'll kind of copy some of those same prompts right here so that they can practice it at home. And it's easy to select the correct answer, set the correct answer. Short answers I like. I use this for um, writing prompts where I want to hear their opinions. Again, I'm attaching pictures to all of these, but you don't have to. You can just say, you know, how was your weekend and, and let them write about it. Uh, fill in the blanks is great. Um, it's not case sensitive, but it is spelling sensitive. So if a student were to write or were to spell my name wrong here, they wouldn't get credit. So you'd have to go back in and and give them credit. So it's a little bit of a pain, but if you want to test them on spelling, it's a great way to do that. And then finally, there's a matching section. Um, I'm not really going to get into doing all of that, but basically, you know, you can give directions here, match the correct answers uh, or the correct definitions with the vocabulary words. I have found that it's a little tricky for the students to do. There's something about the click and drag um, process that doesn't seem to work too well. So let me just delete that. They'll click assign quiz, give it a due date. Maybe you want it to be on the same day or the next day. Add to grade book and send it to your students. They really seem to like this and get into doing it. Um, yeah, I found it to be really effective. Um, now, right now, you can see you can set up a calendar. So even the two little assignments that I put in are already marked on my calendar. And it will go on their calendar as well so that they can kind of plan ahead. 
Also, progress, this is where you would see like your grade book. Now, of course, I don't have any students right now, so I'm not going to see any of that, uh, but that's where it would be. And again, the library that looks like a bunch of books. And I've got a new alert. So that's that alert that I said, hey, quiz tomorrow. Um, and you can hide those alerts from notifications. And that's it. There's a lot more to learn, but that should get you started.